Good presentations are more a result of deliberate effort than an innate ability. Hardly anyone is born with it. We must think of a presentation as a performance. Take a good stand-up comedian, for instance. He or she makes it seem like they're spontaneously thinking of the material on the stage. You may be disappointed that in almost all cases the comedian has prepared the material beforehand, rehearsed it numerous times, and carefully designed the exact delivery with the primary goal of being entertaining. Therefore, a successful performer possesses command over his or her channels of communication, be it singing, dancing, acting, or their comedic material, to capture our attention. Similarly, an engaging presenter must strive to artfully deliver a compelling presentation, and this can be done by a judicious interplay of their channels of communication, namely their words, their actions, their slides, and their content. Now, the greatest crime committed by a presenter is reading, either from their slides or from their notes. This is when a presenter stops being like a performer and becomes disengaging. Okay? Instead, create notes and use them to practice aloud. In fact, practice aloud at least five times. I'm emphasizing the word aloud because practicing it in your head is, well, worthless. Practicing will allow you to abandon your notes and dramatically reduce the ums by becoming comfortable with the flow and timing. You can make your talk appealing by treating it more like a conversation rather than reading a paper. Pretend you are talking to someone face to face with all the pitch variation associated with more natural speaking style. If you want to capture your audience's attention, maintain eye contact with everyone in the room, all right? And avoid being stationary. Portray enthusiasm by projecting your voice and being animated by gesturing and using the stage. Move around a little. Your body language should invite your audience into a conversation. For example, you can ask questions, provide insights, and solicit responses. Your dress style should reflect your presentation style, crisp and non-distracting. Basically, try not to draw attention to what you're wearing. When presenting, pause frequently and avoid rushing through your talk. Zooming through your slides is an obvious sign of unpreparedness. Slides serve a secondary role in your performance and therefore they should always supplement your message and not substitute you, the presenter. Use your slides to convey visual information such as tables, images, figures, and plots. The delivery of words is your responsibility, therefore avoid text on your slides. That is aside from headings and bullets that can at times help the audience orient and highlight key concepts. Also, try to keep these bullets short, one to five words only. In terms of your slide layout, select the slide theme with limited distractions. You want your slides to be less animated than you. A powerful beginning typically involves a thought-provoking idea related to your topic, rather than a boring title and who you are. You can do that after the first slide. Organize your talk to logically begin with a big picture followed by narrowing down to the key discussion items. So what about an outline slide? Well, an outline slide for a 30-minute talk or less is typically unnecessary. Instead, you can simply describe what you'll be discussing. Always reference the content because it provides credibility to your work. Here's an important tip. What is between the slides is as important as what is within. So be conscious of the transitions. Think of how you're going to move from one slide to another. And finally, remain within the time allocated to give justice to your memorable conclusion. In other words, finish with a bang. Remember, even the best presenters practice. Very few people are naturally articulate. Most of us need to prepare and create the right atmosphere to captivate the audience. I believe that the best presentations are well-rehearsed and masterfully crafted performances.